We had an industry that came to us and said, we want to be a part of the community. We want to be here and provide jobs. We want to be sure that your sons and your brothers and your fathers have jobs that they can depend on. And we bought it. We went from living on a farm to living in a refinery. First of all, you lose all your privacy and the use of your land is drastically altered because there's people coming and going 24 hours a day, a lot of traffic, big pieces of machinery, and people making decisions on your ground about what's happening there with no consultation with you. When things started to go wrong, they weren't anywhere to be found. This is what it looked like. This is our house. We were still building it when they started drilling real close to us. State of Wyoming says no oil and gas drilling any closer than 350 feet to a domestic source of water. Because we have all these great regulations, but the state of Wyoming won't hire any inspectors to come out and make sure they're actually following the regulations. So we were the ones left to try to deal with this. We were the ones left to police the land. We're the ones that have the most to lose. This is what the hydrofracking process looked like from our front porch. The fracking was small scale compared to a lot of the fracking that goes on. In the United States, a large portion of the chemicals that they use are exempt from disclosure. They're trade secrets. They like to say it's just like Coca-Cola's secret recipe, which is a crock of you know what. They're keeping secrets. And there's a reason they're keeping secrets, because this isn't safe. If it was safe, they'd come out and tell everybody what they're using and alleviate all of our concerns, and they refuse to do that. It smelled terrible. It made your eyes swell up. It made your nose burn. I guess the first health impacts I really saw were with my mother-in-law. She lost her sense of smell and her sense of taste. And at first we thought maybe it was something unique to her, but now my wife is having the same problems and a lot of the neighbor ladies are losing their smell and their taste. And there's women who have neuropathy where their arms and their legs go numb. And a lot of the men suffer chronic fatigue and ringing of the ears and chronic headaches. And you know, anybody who works on a farm or a ranch, there's tired, there's working tired and they're so tired that you feel like you can't function. And that's a completely different thing. Uh, we've seen uh, mental, problems where people lose cognitive abilities. They lose the ability to, to speak in complete sentences and they lose the ability to, to have a clear train of thought. But I think the thing that probably disturbs me the most are, are children seem to be the most susceptible to this. Kids with nosebleeds, kids with kidney failure. We can't even hardly go outside at times because the fumes from the production tanks are horrible. We have BTEX chemicals that evaporate out of the tanks. You can taste it. My youngest son, who's now 15, he's, was three when they really started doing the heavy, heavy drilling right within 350 feet of our home. Started having seizures and has spent the last 12 years of his life on anti-seizure medication. And every time we leave home, every time we go somewhere else, he'd feel better. We all feel better when we leave home. It's really disturbing. We're the ones who find 99% of the problems that occur on our place. And then you have to try to find somebody who can come out and actually fix the problem. This is kind of a regular occurrence around us now. We've got this whole infrastructure that's starting to fail. Our neighbor's water is black, smells like diesel fuel, or yellow and smells like diesel fuel. But the recommendations from our Center for Disease Control were don't drink the water, don't cook with the water, and if you bathe in it, or wash dishes, or wash laundry, open the windows of the house and ventilate it so your home doesn't explode from the methane that comes out. And as you've all seen on video clips from the United States, there's water that lights on fire, and that's the most incredible, stupid thing to see water catch on fire, but it's happening. The biggest thing we've probably seen in social ills is a massive amount of drug use and alcohol abuse that follows this. We have some of the highest drinking rates in the United States, and it goes way up when these industries come to town. Domestic violence goes up, abuse of women goes up, the quality of education goes down, hospitals are overcrowded, jails are overcrowded, 
public works cannot keep up with the water and the sewer or the demands of all the man camps that come in. And after they've run crazy in your town for five or six or 10 years, then they leave and go somewhere else and you're left with a giant mess. And it's very hard to recover from it. You know, if you wanna be sure that your meat and your milk safe, you have to be sure of everything that that cow is ingesting. And what concerns me is that we're going to actually make somebody sick. And once that happens, I don't think there'll be any fix in the beef industry in that part of the country. And they've also bought the political system in the United States. And it seems to me from what I've seen here, and it looks pretty damn similar to what happens in our country. The politicians are looking at it for money. And a lot of these politicians, when they stop being elected by the people, are going to go to work for industry. It's a giant good old boys club, is what we call it in the States. And they stack the deck in their favor. And unless the people stand up and raise hell with them, they'll just run over the top of you because they've got it bought. The biggest tactic that this industry uses is to divide the people up and make them feel like they're different and make them have conflict with each other. I think the hardest thing to, to think about is it's really a special place to live and it's been destroyed by somebody who wants to make money. If we stay there, we're going to poison ourselves. That's the hardest thing to deal with. Where are we going to go and what are we going to do? This is our way of life. And now the prospect is we're going to have to go someplace completely different and start over again. I see this happening all over the United States and now I hear stories in Australia of this happening and in Europe and in South America and Canada and Mexico and where's it going to end? It's only going to end when the people stand up and absolutely demand that things are done differently. And it's not about energy independence, it's about human rights. If I drink water and breathe air and eat food, this is my business. All parts of Australia need to stand together on this. It doesn't matter if it's coal seam gas or shale gas or tight sands, it's all the same and it has the same end results. And the people can stop this if they stick together.